prepared for something new. Everyone is different. So are you. Stay straight. No masquerades. Do things that you'll remember. You can push too far, but stay fair. Stay on track. Give it your all. Get to the bottom of things. Decide what's right. Don't believe in what the others do. Find it out for yourself. Be close to it all. Bring your heart along. Follow your goals. Reach for the stars. Turn the weekend into the loudest party of your life. Are you prepared? Hello everyone, finally we are back. It's the DTM 2017. We're here in Hockenheim Ring and finally we are racing again. One thing is for sure, so many things in this new season is new and the new regulations really are paying off, that I can tell you already. So here are the highlights, enjoy. Welcome to the 2017 DTM season. The Hockenheim Ring traditionally stages the opener of Europe's toughest touring car series. Spectacular touring car racing and the action off the track prompt 79,500 spectators to flock to the circuit this weekend. And numerous touring car legends have dropped by as well including the five-time DTM champion, Bernd Schneider. Also the three-time champion, Klaus Ludwig. And the only woman to have won a DTM race so far back in 1992, Ellen Law. Many other motorsport celebrities are on hand. Michael Schumacher's manager, Sabina Ken, former Mercedes-Benz head of motorsport, Norbert Haug, and his successor, Toto Wolff. David Coulthard is here as well, in conversation with Pascal Verlein and Augusto Farfus. Timo Scheider is here as well. He'll be competing in the Rallycross program that supports the DTM at this weekend at Hockenheim. He's welcoming Mick Schumacher, who of course races in the FIA Formula 3 European focus is also on Gerhard Berger. He is the new big boss, the ITR chairman. A former Formula One driver and a team principal. Seen here in conversation with David Coulthard, Gerhard Berger also contested a few DTM races going back to 1986. The fight for the championship is on, and Marco Wittmann is one of the contenders. The BMW driver won his second DTM championship title last year, but everything starts from scratch again. At the end, there are 18 drivers out who can win races, who can fight for the championship, so I wouldn't pick out there one single driver. But he has to watch out, as there is tough competition. Last year's runner-up has left Audi for Mercedes-Benz now. When you're starting a season, and obviously you're, I've been fighting for the championship also last year, the goal can only be one, you know, is to, is to finally win it. With Mortara now gone, Audi's hopes mainly rest on Jamie Green and Matthias Ekstrom. They are two of 18 drivers, six drivers for each manufacturer. The number has shrunk, but the quality is higher as 15 of them have at least one DTM race win to their tally. Only the newbies have yet to win a race. Last year's replacement driver, Rene Rast. DTM returnee, Maro Engel. And the only rookie, 2013 Le Mans winner, Loic Duval. It could always be a young gun that pops up and surprises us, you know, like we've seen in the past with Whitman and, um, and Verline. Not only the staff has changed, some other things are different too. The engines are more powerful. 
There are new tyres allowing faster lap times, but they also degrade faster. Moreover, pit radio communication has been banned. And races on Saturday are now just as long as Sunday races. It's a double dose of great racing action every weekend, guaranteed. It's nice that you have pit stop and long races on both days because I think that makes the chance that uh, you can have some more action. So generally the Saturdays I think will be better and Sunday is very similar. The 2017 DTM season with new rules, new drivers and new technology. The race for the title is on. And here comes the grid for the first race of season 2017. Lucas Au with a fantastic job, bold position alongside him, fellow Mercedes driver Gary Pavitt. Eduardo Mortara and Timo Glock are on row two of the grid for the 55 minute race plus one lap. Then it's Maxime Martin and Paul Duresta who go on P3. Maro Engel, returnee to the DTM, and Nico Muller share row number four. Then we find P9 and P10, it's Tom Blomqvist and Robert Wickens. Mid-grid for Marco Vipman, the current champion, P11, and Jamie Green, completing row number six. It's Bruno Spengler and Rennie Rast from P13 and P14. Augusto Farfus and Mike Rockefeller are on the eighth row of the grid. Here at Hockenheim, we find Matthias Ekstrom and Lloyd Duval rounding out the back row of the grid for the first race in 2017. The 2015 DTM champion and now Formula One racer Pascal Verlein is back. Always oh, really nice to be back here. You know, uh, I've had a great time with, with Mercedes here and it's always nice to see the people here again. And, uh, you know, now I'm crossing my fingers for, for all of them and uh, it's looking good for the race. So can't wait to see it. Pascal won the championship back in 2015. We're right at the start of the season for 2017 and already Lucas Auer is leading the championship. How so? Well, Verena will explain more. And now I'm here with a pole setter, Lucas Auer. That's absolutely fantastic. He collected three points, which is new in the DTM season 2017, which means you're um, starting from pole and you're also leader of the championship in the first race. So I guess that's a very good start. Yeah, as you said, very good start. I even forgot, uh, forgot the new point system. So, no, um, good start. And now, most important, now comes the first race. So, let's see. Absolutely. And now, your uncle, Gerd Berger, is actually the new DTM chairman. So, does that mean pressure or motivation? I think between me and Gerd, nothing changed. At the end, uh, I haven't seen him yet. So, you see, so nothing changed between us. P2 in qualifying. Fellow Mercedes Benz driver Gary Paffett. He's 131.042. Gave him P2 on the grid alongside his uh, Mercedes teammate Lucas Auer. So it's two points from uh, qualifying for Gary Paffett, and it's uh, one point for Eduardo Mortara, another Mercedes Benz driver. Now, of course, uh, he has moved to Mercedes Benz from Audi and has settled in very well. And finishing third in qualifying means, of course, that he does take a championship point before a race has even started. It was a very good qualifying as well from the BMW driver Timo Glock. Best of the BMWs, he goes from P4. He's 131-161, putting him on the second row of the grid. Another BMW driver will be going from P5 and you just see the car and there is the driver, Maxime Martin. 131-247 in qualifying for Maxime Martin, P5 on the grid. Both races now, 55 minutes plus one lap with a mandatory pit stop, which can be taken at any time in the race. So P4 and P5 qualifying for BMW, here's Jens Marquardt. Obviously it's uh, first qualifying for this season. So to have at least one car in the second row and one in the third is a good starting point. Uh, race is going to be interesting and, um, and I would just hope that we go under green and let the whole thing run and um, yeah, see how the next hour goes. Jens Marquardt from BMW then pretty happy with the uh, performance of his uh, drivers. Uh, the best of the Audis is Nico Muller now going from P8 on the grid. I think, if anything, Audi probably surprised us with their pace in qualifying, not being exactly where we expected it to be. Let's hear from Dieter Gass now. Dieter Gass, um, best Audi in P8 with Nico uh, Müller. So uh, are you struggling with something or what do you think? It's just the first race of the uh, season. Is it just the, uh, the usual what you can expect or are you disappointed, obviously, about that? 
No, I need to admit I'm slightly disappointed with the qualifying result. We were expecting and hoping for more. But obviously with everything new this year, uh, you couldn't really judge where you were before uh, the qualifying session today. Uh, so now uh, we're going into the race. Obviously, most of the points are distributed after the race, so we try to improve from where we are. And whilst we were saying how well Timo Glock and Maxime Martin had done for BMW, a real surprise here for the uh, two-time champion, the current champion, Marco Wittmann. He's 131.662. Only giving him the uh, time which gives him P11 on the grid. So we probably expected Marco Vettman to be higher up the order than he is. Next up, it's uh, the 2013 champion, Mike Rockefeller. Now he's even further back on the grid than uh, Marco Vettman. He goes from P16. So Mike Rockefeller then P16 on the grid as final adjustments are made to the tyre pressures. New compound of tyres from Hankook for the 2017 season. Going from P17 is Matthias Ekstrom. Now he and Marco Wittmann are the only drivers to boast two DTM championship titles. In 2004 and 2007 for Matthias Ekstrom, who has a very busy weekend as he competes not only in the DTM but also in Rallycross as well. Jens Marquardt from BMW and here's some team radio. Good luck. And I say some because team radio between the pit wall and the drivers is uh, much reduced for season 2017. Barring safety critical messages, the lights are about to go out. Pole position then is on the right hand side of your screen. Eduardo Mortara moves across to try and block Timo Glock, but Timo Glock could get P3 into turn number one. Indeed, he does. All the cars come through. The one that runs really wide is Bruno Spengler, and uh, he finds himself second from last in the pack now but Lucas Ayer, Gary Papert, Timo Glock then it's Eduardo Mortara being chased now by Maxime Martin and Paul De Resta as for the first time of asking they're on to the Parabolica here a little bit of a whale tail from Nico Muller means Marco Wittmann goes to the outside of him and we're on board with Timo Glock chasing down Gary Paffett. DRS usage has been restricted to 12 laps in any given race and can be used three times during any lap that it is activated so Eduardo Mortara still seeing off uh, Maxime Martin, but Gary Pafford is the man under pressure here, having to defend from Timo Glock. This is playing into the hands of Lucas A, who's able to escape up the road, as you can see, as they come into the Mercedes arena. Let's get a replay of the start there. And you can see just how vigorously Mortara tried to dive and protect that P3 position from Timo Glock, but was unable to do so. Glock went through with his BMW and converted his P4 starting place into P3 in the race. Man on a charge is Timo Glock. And here we can see a replay of the start and Augusto Farfus bogging down at the start. Supreme avoidance by Matthias Ekstrom to avoid clattering into the BMW. So as we go back to the race then, Timo Glock, I mentioned, is the man on the charge and into the hairpin. He has a go at Gary Paffett. He's through on the inside. Gary Paffett will try and come back underneath him now, but Timo Glock has done enough to move into P2. So we have Lucas Auer leading, then it is Timo Glock, then it is Gary Paffett. Let's see it again from a different angle here. A little bit of a lock-up from Timo Glock. Gary Paffett goes right to the outside to try and come back underneath the BMW of Timo Glock, but it's unable to do so. On board with uh, Timo Glock then. You just see the race-leading Lucas Hour car there, but Timo Glock doing everything exactly right through the hairpin. It was a slight spin for uh, Tom Blancvist. He's able to return, though. And uh, sets off chasing down Augusto Farfus. So a uh, spin means that Tom Blancvist right at the back of the pack now. Race being led by uh, Lucas Hour. And here we can see the spin from uh, Blancvist. Contact between himself and Robert Wickens. Nico Muller around the outside takes avoiding action. And that wasn't the only contact because Maro Angle and Jamie Green came together and that uh, pirouetted Maro Angle out in the Mercedes arena onto the uh, runoff area. Does manage to get the car going again, but quite a bit of debris left across the track. And here we can see that in replay. Jamie Green up the inside. Maro Angle closes the door. There's contact between the two of them. And the uh, spinning Maro Angle and Jamie Green off the uh, into the runoff area as well. And there you can see. Oh, only just avoiding the uh, Robert Wickens Mercedes-Benz car that was ahead of those two as that contact happened. So Robert Wickens gets a drive-through penalty for the uh, incident that we saw with uh, Tom Blomqvist. He takes that drive-through penalty. And he's back out on track once again, but of course that's put him right to the very, very back of the pack. 
Uh, this is Jamie Green then. Also gets a uh, drive-through penalty for that contact on Marrow Angle. So two drive-through penalties, two uh, visits to the pit lane already. And Timo Glock and uh, Gary Paffett continuing to fight here. Gary Paffett really hasn't let uh, Timo Glock get away. And Gary will try and come underneath him now on the exit of the uh, hairpin. And down towards the Mercedes Arena. Is he close enough? No, not quite close enough to be able to make the next turn the inside line. Eduardo Mortara is just sitting back, waiting for these two to fight. Gary Paffett with a lock up, try to move down the inside, but carry too much speed, not able to overtake Timo Glock, and furthermore loses out on a place to Eduardo Mortara now. Quietly going about his work is Matthias Ekstrom. He's up to P7. When you consider that he started uh, P17 on the grid, it's great driving from Matthias Ekstrom, who, of course, has been able to benefit from uh, some of the collisions, including that of Jamie Green and Maro Engel. And now you can see him uh, with Marco Wittmann up the inside. Matthias Ekstrom, well known for his excellent tyre management. Pit stop for Lucas Auer. You were a bit too fast. You were a bit too fast at the beginning of the stint. Glock was a bit fast at the end. And a slight delay for Lucas Auer. Go, 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 go. And basically what happened there was the lollipop on top of the gantry didn't lift and therefore... Watch the white line. Lucas Auer didn't go. The lollipop does sometimes stay down if there is another car coming down the pit lane and Lucas Auer would have thought that it was uh, kept down to avoid an unsafe release. That wasn't the case, it was clearly an error. And Lucas Auer has lost some valuable seconds. Paul de Resta back out, so too is Marco Wittmann. You can see the pit stop times on the graphics there, eight seconds and nine seconds respectively. This is Timo Glock and uh, Mike Rockefeller fighting. So Timo Glock chasing down Mike Rockefeller, but Mike Rockefeller makes the hairpin his own and Timo Glock certainly not close enough to be able to do anything. Ignore the order on the left-hand side of your screen because uh, that doesn't take into account the pit stops. So the order as shown on the screen on the left-hand side of your picture is uh, pretty nominal until everyone has done their pit stop, including Eduardo Mortara. Now where Eduardo Mortara comes out, because Martin and Muller are heading into the pits at the same time, Not a very fast time for Eduardo Mortara, who makes his way back out. Now we can see Mike Rockefeller and Timo Glock. Where's Eduardo Mortara going to return relative to where they are? Bear in mind, tyre warm is also not being allowed to be used during season 2017. So Eduardo Mortara is out on fresh tyres, but they're cold tyres. Well, he's split Mike Rockefeller and Timo Glock at the moment, but he could fall prey now to Timo Glock, whose tyres are, of course, warmed up. And yes, Eduardo Mortara slides, and that allows that Timo Glock to go through. There are problems during uh, Nico Muller's pit stop. He loses time. Due to the new regulations, pit stops do take longer as only eight mechanics are allowed to work on the car. The work done by the teams now has a much larger impact on the race results. So Nico Muller eventually on his way. Just two engineers per side. Debris being removed from the front of the uh, Maxime Martin car. And you can see how they have to sprint from front to back. Here's a replay now of the Lucas Hour pit stop. Job is done, car is released, and as you can see, that uh, AMG lollipop has not moved, and that. Lucas Auer did everything absolutely right in that uh, he is guided by that uh, lollipop and it didn't uh, lift. And also problems for Robert Wickens as well with a spinning wheel there, really hampering the uh, team's efforts and a long time in the pit lane, therefore, for Robert Wickens. Okay, back to the race then, and Parabolica. And once again, Timo Glock sizes up. Mike Rockefeller ahead, has got the inside line into the hairpin. Rocky goes wide and will try and come underneath Timo Glock now to fight and get the place back. He's got a real turn of speed, but Timo Glock will try and close the door as they enter the Mercedes Arena here at Hockenheim and does so. So good move from Timo Glock. A couple of laps are trying, but uh, eventually he's made it his own and does go past Mike Rockefeller. And there we can see the move in replay. Mike Rockefeller tries to come back at him, but he's unable to do so, carrying so much speed. Through the Parabolica and then King of the Late Breakers through the hairpin. Great shot there. This is Matthias Ekstrom in now. As I mentioned, he's quietly been going about his business. And a good stop here from the um, apt team for Matthias Ekstrom will aid him in his uh, quest to get up the uh, road. And 6.9 seconds. Now, where is he relative to uh, Paul de Resta? There is Paul de Resta. Bear in mind, Matthias Ekstrom has returned with cold tyres, whereas Paul de Resta and indeed Rennie Rast, their tyres are up to temperature. And Matthias Ekstrom could fall prey to his Audi brand mate here, Renny Rast. Indeed, he does so. Renny Rast now up to uh, P7 and will uh, take the chase to Paul de Resta. So, Parabolica and Renny Rast then 
on the inside of Paul Duresta. And goes through untroubled. Duresta will uh, try and come back on the inside and does get right alongside Rennie Rast. So it's side by side as they head in towards the uh, Mercedes Arena here. But Rennie Rast is just able to close the door. You can see uh, how this worked out through the hairpin from that uh, fantastic shot that we can bring you. This is where Paul Duresta tries to get alongside the Audi car, but is unable to do so. In the meantime, Matthias Ekstrom goes past uh, Paul Duresta as well, chasing down his uh, brand mate, Rene Rast. To say, uh, in the early stages of the race, Matthias Ekstrom quietly going about his work, improving some 10 places from 17th on the grid to P7. And now Matthias Ekstrom finds himself back in P7. This is how he got past Paul Duresta at the hairpin in replay. Carrying enough momentum that Duresta was not able to come back and he's going to try and do exactly the same with Rene Rast now. Carrying the speed through the parabolica to the inside of the hairpin and sure enough Matthias Ekstrom now finds himself in P6 next in his target sights the Mercedes-Benz driver Gary Paffett who is currently running in P5 into the Mercedes arena they go. Lucas Auer coming under real pressure now from Timo Glock the BMW driver. Lucas Auer will stick his elbows out now off the back of the hairpin and try and prevent Timo Glock Heading towards the Mercedes Arena, and I think probably Lucas Auer has done just enough to be able to defend his uh, P1 position. Sure enough, he does deny Timo Glock. Timo now wide outside will try and come on the inside, but again, Lucas makes that Mercedes Benz as wide as possible. Great defending from Lucas Auer and great driving from Matthias Ekstrom, who now does manage to get past Gary Paffett. I mentioned just a few seconds ago he would be next in his target sights. The very closing stages of the race means concern in the garage as Lucas Au continues to defend against uh, Timo Glock and Mike Rockefeller ready to bounce as well. Into the hairpin goes Lucas Au. Timo Glock now, there's a little touch between the two of them. But Timo Glock does the right thing and bails out of that overtake attempt. The toughest defending of his racing career from uh, Lucas Au. Let's see that in replay. There was certainly nothing malicious in that touch between uh, Timo Glock and uh, Lucas Au. Glock uh, dives in and uh, gets the car sideways and just bails out. This is Eduardo Mortara on Mike Rockenfeller then. We're on to the last lap. These two are side by side, but it's going to be Lucas Auer that will take the win from Timo Glock. He's seen off the charge from the BMW driver, but will Mike Rockenfeller, the final podium place, fall prey to the Mercedes driver Eduardo Mortara? Just two bends left, but just one left for this man, Lucas Auer. As he heads towards the checkered flag, he will take win number one for season 2017. Never in my life. Yes! Yes! He's pretty delighted. Yo. Timo Glock takes P2, Mike Rockefeller P3. Lucas, congrats! Congratulations! Okay, well Matthias, done, you mate. position. Well what a race for race number one. Lucas Auer and Mercedes-Benz are the victors. Congratulations all round, as you would expect. Thomas Baltaz there from Hankook Tires, and let's hear from the Mercedes boss, Oli Fritz. I think after strategy, we knew that it would be tough in the end, but it, that it would be that tough was just not, not planned. However, Luki did a great job. I mean, I'm really proud of the whole team to come back after the winter like that. It's just, it's just great, and after qualifying, I mean, yeah, we would have wanted more for sure, but uh, yeah, Luki on top of, of, the, of the grid is great. A very happy Uli Fritz. Lucas Auer then, Timo Glock and Mike Rockenfeller occupy the podium places with Eduardo Mortara, Matthias Ekstrom, Renny Rast, Gary Paffett, Paul DiResta, Nico Muller and Marco Fitman completing the top ten. And then the rest of the order on the second page, Martin Spengler, Farfus, Lloyd Duval, Wickens, Blomqvist, Engel and Green. Let's hear from Mike Rockefeller then, P3. Rocky, you just came from all the way in the back. I mean, you were in P16 and you made it to P3. You're pushing really, really hard and you had a really good pit stop strategy. Yeah, I mean, we, we had to try something for sure from where we came on the grid. Uh, it was amazing. Obviously, the race uh, played in our cards and our side because some guys had issues. But nevertheless, I mean, to be in the points was my dream. To be on the podium is amazing. So it's really good to be back on the podium. It took me quite a while and I'm very happy enjoying the moment. Trophy presentation time then. And the first race win goes the way of the young Austrian, Lucas Auer. He holds the trophy aloft and let's hear from the P2 driver now, Timo Glock. 
And I thought Lucas is just playing a game and trying to save his tires, but then I realized, oh hey, he's struggling, he's struggling. So I pushed all the way through and I knew I have only one one shot at the end. Um, because soon as you, but I realized when, when the guys behind pushed pressure on me, they couldn't stay close for, for a lot of laps. So I knew I can do it only once, but I never was close enough uh, to really attack him. So, um, but at the end, I'm happy um, to be on the podium. And in the Drivers' Championship, bearing in mind 3-2-1 points for the top three in qualifying as well, means that Lucas Auer heads the championship table on 28 points with a 10-point advantage over Timo Glock and Mike Rockefeller in P3. So that's the first points chart of the uh, new season. And uh, right now, let's hear from our race winner, Lucas Auer. Lucas, congratulations to a really flawless race. You did a fantastic job and you've got to be thrilled. Yeah, I'm, I'm so pleased for me, for the guys, for everybody. Um, mega tough, mega tough race. At the beginning, such a big gap, and then after the bit stop, I struggled a bit, but at the end, I won. So everything good. Well, the change is working for Lucas Auer as he celebrates the first win of the season up there on the top step of the podium. Former DTM driver and former Formula One star David Coulthard is he a fan of the new rules? Well, I really enjoyed this new format. I'm sure the drivers who are not on the podium have a story of why it didn't work for them, but. You know, to have three manufacturers battling right at the very end for the victory, I think shows that something is working. Um, and that's important because this is the fastest form of, of touring car racing. We've got three of the biggest manufacturers in the world here. And uh, so it was a pleasure to watch it. Well, the weather conditions that greet us for the Sunday race are altogether different to those on the Saturday. Some rain overnight and it's cold and cloudy and the threat of rain is never far away, but that hasn't stopped thousands of spectators coming in to enjoy the race. And here is the grid for race number two. And it's Timo Glock, P1, and Rennie Rast, P2. Brilliant qualifying from those two drivers. Then we find Jamie Green and Eduardo Mortara on the second row of the grid. It's Mike Rockenfeller and Bruno Spengler that go from P5 and P6. Onto the next row of the grid and we find uh, the race winner from Saturday, P8, and Gary Paffett will go from P7. It's Maro Engel and Matthias Ekstrom rounding out the fifth row of the grid for race two. And it's Paul DiResta and Nico Muller, P11 and P12. Lloyd Duval and Tom Blomqvist share the seventh row of the grid at Hockenheim for race two, with Maxime Martin and Robert Wickens going from P15 and P16. Reigning TTM champion Marco Wittmann finds himself back down on the last row, P17, and he has Augusto Farfus for company. Gerhard Berger is the new chairman of the ITR, the body that runs the DTM. He must be pleased with the opener. Well, new season, new good start. We had a great race yesterday. I think the fans had uh, really a super race to watch. Today qualifying was also good, so let's see to the, how it goes this afternoon. But in general, I think we have a lot of positive input at the moment, and uh, we are looking forward for a very strong season. Well, the new format finds favour with the fans, as does the fact that they can be the recipient of a DTM T-shirt. Launched into the grandstands, all we need is a good catch. Ah, oh, well. Onto the grid, Marco Wittmann. Two-time champion Marco Wittmann finds himself down there, P17. 132.661 was the best that he could deliver during qualifying and he'll be much further down the grid than he would expect to be. Starting from P7 is uh, Gary Paffett. All smiles from the uh, British driver. A 132.025 then for Gary Paffett. And there is his car placed on the grid. A number of uh, new faces in the DTM for 2017 and plenty of returnees as well. And a switch of manufacturer for this man, Eduardo Mortara, who charged hard yesterday. His 131.759 gives him P4 for the former Audi driver who is now firmly ensconced with Mercedes-Benz. The number 48 car then going from P4 on the grid. Jamie Green. 131.639, very good qualifying from Jamie Green. You'll recall the contact between Jamie and uh, Maro Engel yesterday, causing Jamie to have a drive-through penalty. We're hoping for a good result, potentially, from P3 on the grid for Jamie Green. Rennie Rast, of course, did have a couple of races in DTM in 2016, but must be considered a rookie driver. And a 131.581 from Rennie for P2 on the grid 
A very good qualifying performance indeed, and one I suspect that must please Dieter Gass. Uh, Rene really, uh, I would consider this is his first proper race weekend in DTM. He did step in uh, last year already, but uh, it's a different uh, thing if you are a proper DTM factory driver. And uh, he was able to deal with the pressure and in very difficult uh, situation. He made the right calls and uh, did the right thing and had an excellent lap, so it's fantastic. I'm really happy for him. Well, the man that did it all in qualifying and put the car on pole position, 131.406 from Timo Glock. That means he goes from P1 and Verena caught up with him on the grid just ahead of the start of the race. Timo Glock is already tucked in into the car, focused. Um, we saw a spectacular qualifying, however, we also saw you sliding around, but you kept your calm and in the end you really uh, showed us the perfect lap. How did you manage? Um, for sure it was a chaotic qualifying, to be honest. Um, and the start was very difficult on the on the wet tires and with the slicks even more difficult because there are a lot of wet patches on the track but in general I think the second set I was just getting the lap really well together and uh, at the end uh, we ended up on pole. Timo Scheider and Jens Marquardt in the BMW garage, there's Uli Fritz and Toto Wolf in the Mercedes garage and in the uh, Audi one it's Arno Sensen and uh, Dieter Gass ahead of the start of race number two. And the lights are out, and Timo Glock with a good start. Rennie Rast appeared to bog down. Robert Wickens trying to come through the middle of the pack. As you can see, Jamie Green is up to P2. As they run through turn number one. And a real coming together there with uh, Nico Muller, Robert Wickens, and Loic Duval, which has seen Robert Wickens and Loic Duval out onto the uh, gravel. So Jamie Green then firmly positioned in P2. Gary Paffin, another driver very much on the move and keep an eye on Matthias Ekstrom as well. He's been victorious in Rallycross this weekend and wants to convert that to success in Rallycross to DTM as well. So as they all head around the Parabolica for the first time in this, the second race of this DTM weekend, it's Timo Glock, Jamie Green, Mike Rockefeller, then we find uh, Gary Paffin and Lucas Auer. So through the hairpin again, Matthias Ekstrom is man on a charge. Also, Nico Muller right at the back of the pack. You'll recall going into turn one, he was involved in that uh, situation with Lloyd Duval and Robert Wickens. We're on board, chasing down Mike Rockenfeller. So Glock, Green, and uh, Rockenfeller into the Mercedes Arena. And we're on board with Matthias Ekstrom chasing down a Maxime Martin on the mirror as you can see and the safety car has been called for so a safety car deployment in the very early stages of this race and it's the worst possible news for Timo Glock and there the Robert Wickens car having to be recovered from that earlier collision that we saw uh, with Loic Duval let's see it in replay then from the heli shot we saw Robert Wickens going through the uh, middle of the pack and there he is as he turns in contact with uh, Nico Muller who's really the innocent party there and both Robert and Loic Duval end up in the gravel trap. Let's hear from Robert Wickens. I got to the inside of, of uh, Muller. Um, I thought I, there was, everything was fine. I was going to make the corner. I was pretty pleased with myself. And then suddenly I was backwards. So I'm not sure um, what happened really. Actually, I haven't seen a video yet. But uh, I guess end of the day, there was too many cars trying to go into the same, plot, same spot. Well, Robert ends up with an early retirement then following the damage to his car. Plenty of damage on the Nico Muller car as well, as you can see at the front end here. He pits under the safety car. And uh, talking of the safety car, new rules for 2017 means that it's a NASCAR-style side-by-side restart following a safety car, uh, which Gary Paffitt does his level best to take advantage of. But the one that really takes advantage is Jamie Green, and Timo Glock has been mugged because Green is P1. Timo Glock is uh, back to P4. Lucas Auer is P2. Then it is Bruno Spengler. Uh, we're on board with Timo Glock now as they go through turn two and then turn three before the uh, Parabolica. Oh, and there's more contact. This time it's Renny Rast and uh, Maxime Martin getting together. Renny Rast is able to get going again. Bad news for Gary Paffitt. He was out on the grass and was uh, bouncing across the grass as they head up to the hairpin now. All trying to uh, regenerate some heat into those tyres following the safety car. Jamie Green, P1. Lucas Auer P2 and Bruno Spengler under real pressure from uh, Timo Glock and Matthias Ekstrom is P5. Now the uh, restart was under investigation whether Jamie Green was slightly ahead of Timo Glock when, they, uh, when the lights went green, which is the measurement. It's when the lights go green, not the lines on the circuit, it's when the lights go green that is critical. 
And unfortunately, Jamie Green are judged to have been ahead of Timo Glock when the lights did go green, so he will pick up a five-second time penalty for that, which might just hamper the smile of Arno Zenzen there. In the meantime, this was uh, Rennie Rast and the damage caused to the Rennie Rast car as he and Maxime Martin got together there. You can see the front virtually falling away from the Rennie Rast car. That was on the entrance to the uh, Parabolica, and let's hear from Rennie Rast now. I had a bit too much uh, wheel spin at the start, lost uh, one, two position at the start, went a bit wide in uh, turn one, and the car got uh, airlifted. And by that time, I lost another two to three positions, and then in turn two, I got kicked wide and lost another position. And then after the restart, I had a, had a couple of uh, places back, and then I got hit again from uh, someone in turn two, which is obviously not, uh, not nice, but yeah, not a, not a great race so far. Well, the end of the race for Rennie Rast, and it's also the end of the race for Maxime Martin, those two involved in that collision that Rene was talking about. So Jamie Green then, we know he's got a five-second penalty to be served when he takes his uh, bit stop, so he needs to get as far up the road as he can and try and get back to Lucas Ah, who's P2, Bruno Spengler, he's P3. But maybe not for long, because uh, Timo Glock and Matthias Ekstrom are really pushing very, very hard here. Timo Glock up the inside of uh, Bruno Spengler. So he takes P3. Bruno will try and come back on the inside, but truthfully doesn't try too hard. Matthias Ekstrom now is lining up the Bruno Spengler car. We're on board with Matthias Ekstrom as we see a retirement for Loic Duval then in the uh, number 77 car. He's out of the race and he's out of the race because of this. Basically what I saw when I was in the car is that Nico Müller touched me, but uh, you can see that Wickens was on the inside and I stayed a little bit on the outside, but Nico had nowhere to go and he was pushed a little bit by Wickens into me. You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a race incident, uh, for sure it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a problem for us because both Saudis were, were involved in the, in the, in the contact, but uh, you know, also at the end for me it was, uh, was getting better and better, it was uh, more of a good day of yesterday, so I really wanted to do the race and, uh, and to get some experience about, out of it. Well, Lloyd Duval not getting as many racing laps as he would have liked. Look at the Audi bouncing up the inside of the uh, Bruno Spengler car. We can see it from a different angle here. Matthias Ekstrom with a pure pace, able to uh, get past uh, Bruno Spengler. Of course, DRS usage limited to uh, 12 laps per race and only uh, three usages within any nominated lap. But Matthias Ekstrom through to P4 now and will chase down the uh, Timo Glock car undoubtedly just look how the front of that Audi was bouncing along the uh, parabolica there before heavy heavy braking and uh, turning in for the uh, hairpin next in the target sights for Eduardo Mortara is uh, Bruno Spengler and here Matthias Ekstrom on Timo Glock now as they head towards the hairpin and he gets the job done even before they turn into the hairpin, but Timo Glock is going to be able to come back here, so they will be side by side going into the uh, Mercedes arena. From the helicopter then, as I said, Matthias Ekstrom really got the job done before the hairpin, but uh, Timo Glock was able to carry momentum through, and this is where Timo Glock can come back alongside him. This is Eduardo Mortara now on Bruno Spengler super set of uh, replays that we can bring you. Rain has been predicted for the race and uh, Rocky here with an early pit stop. He's going on to slicks. Just listening to Jamie Green's team radio. Jamie Green uh, staying out there. Here on uh, Timo Glock now is Eduardo Mortara really squeezing the uh, BMW driver towards the grass but uh, Eduardo Mortara goes through now to take up that P4 position. Let's see it again in a replay. So as I was mentioning, rain has been predicted for the race, but uh, certainly Mike Rockefeller, the first of those to stop for the mandatory pit stop, has gone uh, on to slick tyres. He has to stop again for rain tyres, and Hans-Jürgen App there actually beginning to think that some raindrops are coming down now. Big, big lock-up and a sideways moment there for uh, Timo Glock, and... Bruno Spengler will be able to take advantage of that and retake that uh, P5 position. And Wiper going on the Matthias Ekstrom car as he's uh, pounding Eduardo Mortara ahead. There is Mortara in the all-pink Mercedes Benz. Running in uh, P3, Matthias Ekstrom just behind. And this is Eduardo Mortara on Matthias Ekstrom earlier in replay around the inside. Adjustments being made to the brake bias then just into the hairpin. 
Fantastic uh, replay shots that we're able to bring you. In comes Matthias Ekstrom now. Uh, raining quite hard in turn two still. Let's try to... So raining quite hard in turn two and on cold tyres, Eduardo Mortara finds himself pointing in the wrong direction. He had made such a charge during the uh, race and you can see the back end of the car looks a bit loose but it's when it gets out onto the Astro here. Can't control it. Car gets sideways, spins around. And let's hear from Eduardo Mortara now. Very disappointed. No? I mean, uh, you know, you, you have races that are not going, you know, in, in your uh, in your way. Let's say, and, and today it was one of those. Came from P13 to P3, which is not normally, yeah, which is pretty difficult in in, in DTM. And uh, everything was running perfect till I made. Uh, Unfortunately, a mistake. Uh, it was starting to rain like pretty hard and pretty a lot in the first turn, and I went in like too fast, spun, and from then on, you know, it was a uh, it was race over. Well, it was brilliant avoidance from Marco Vettman, who had to take to the grass. And the rain coming down now is a real game changer, and the wet weather tyres being ready. Then in comes Marco Vittman, Paul Resta, Gary Paffitt, Maro Engel. They're going to be queuing up in the pit lane here. Marco Vittman then. He receives his wet weather tyres. In comes uh, Gary Paffitt. And uh, they're slow with uh, Paul DeResta because it was slick tyres that they got ready for Paul DeResta. Here's Mike Rockefeller. You'll recall he made an early pit stop. But of course at that point he went on to uh, dry tyres. And now wet weather tyres are very much the order of the day. Jamie Green though has stayed out there nursing that car around. Timo Glock, here's at Nico Muller, and you can see through the lens of our camera there that the rain really is coming down now. Got some free idea if I... Oh, Timo Glock really struggling to control that car. Now, this is Jamie Green's five second penalty. So now, oh, and he stalls the, he stalls the car. So Lucas Auer goes into the lead Jamie Green now will have to do his mandatory pit stop, but he's been out there long enough to be able to hold on and go on to wet weather tyres. There you can see the wet weather tyres going on to the uh, Jamie Green car, but it's going to be a long pit stop for Jamie because he not only had that five second penalty to serve, but Blooming will stall the car coming out of the uh, penalty box, but he's uh, back on his way out now. In comes Timo Glock then, who's having to nurse the car around on those slick tyres. And he also goes on to uh, wet weather tyres now. Just two engineers are allowed to actually change those uh, wheels and tyres. And it's uh, Lucas Hour now. Going on to the uh, Hankook wets. Spins the wheels and uh, Lucas Hour back on his way out again now. So Lucas Hauer gives it a footfall. We're on board with uh, Marco Vittman. You can see the uh, Lucas Hauer car returning onto the track and the spray being kicked up from that uh, Lucas Hauer car. Jamie Green has done enough to stay in front. That's extraordinary driving from Jamie Green, who stays ahead of Lucas Hauer and Marco Vittman then with uh, Gary Paffitt in P4, Nico Muller P5, Paul De Resta P6, but Lucas Auer runs really, really wide. And he's gone back now to P4 because Gary Paffitt is ahead of him. And there you can see Lucas Auer in replay into the hairpin. He wasn't even going to be able to turn in and when you're in a situation like that you're better off leaving the car straight and slowing it down before trying to make the turn. Gary Paffett now on Marco Vittman. This is for P2. Jamie Green leading the race and Gary Paffett now is into P2. Marco Vittman tries to come back. He was off onto the Astro and then onto the grass. Good save from Marco Vittman. Manages to hold on to it and continue to pursue Gary Paffett but it's Gary Paffett now that is at P2. Matthias Ekstrom being hounded by Timo Glock. Glock takes a look at the inside of the hairpin. Racing room is left there by Matthias Ekstrom, who will try and come underneath Timo Glock now, but Timo Glock blocks the inside to the next turn. In replay, from a long way back then, Timo Glock makes it work. Let's say good respect between the two of them. Racing room left, and Matthias Ekstrom was going to try and uh, get the switch back and come underneath. 
uh, Timo Glock, but it wasn't to happen. This is Glock on uh, Bruno Spengler and also Maro Engel. Well, he managed to get past uh, Bruno Spengler, but uh, wasn't quite so successful with uh, Maro Engel, who will be next in his target sights. He's running in uh, P8. Here in replay then, Timo Glock shows exactly how it should be done at the hairpin by getting past uh, Bruno Spengler. And then a carbon copy as he goes from Maro Engel now a lap or so later on. Bruno Spengler also trying to take advantage of that, but wasn't able to do so. So Timo Glock now moves up a further place to P8. So in pretty atrocious weather conditions then, Timo Glock, a man really on a charge. And here he is on Maro Engel. Let's hear from Timo Glock. In general, I th uh, think the race still was good for me to, to come back uh, to the points. I just made the wrong call on the tyres at the end. Came in too late, but um, you know I'm still happy with the with the opening weekend. Being two times in the points uh, with a strong pace is is uh, very good. Well, the ultimate rain master has been this man, Jamie Green, then, who rounds the final turn and will head towards the timing line to take the win in race two. But Jamie Green in trouble with the stewards because he stops alongside the pit wall here. And Dr. Wolfgang Ulrich leans over the uh, pit wall to say, come on, Jamie, get going again. And Jamie Green ultimately will have to pay a fine because you shouldn't stop on the uh, start-finish line up against the uh, pit wall. Ultimately, he does get away with a fine for that no other penalty. So many congratulations to Jamie Green and the delight there of uh, Dr. Wolfgang Ulrich and also uh, Dieter Gass being congratulated. A great win for Jamie Green then. But this the moment where he stopped to congratulate the team for giving him a race-winning car and Dr. Wolfgang Ulrich urging him to uh, move on. Jamie Green then, I think it's his 14th win in uh, DTM. Here are the results in full for you. Jamie Green takes the win from Gary Paffett and all British 1-2. Marco Vittman, Lucas Auer, then Nico Muller, Paul Durest and Mike Rockenfeller, Timo Glock, Bruno Spengler and Maro Engel with his first points and his return to uh, DTM, he takes a P10. And then the second page of the timing screen reveals the rest of the order as Jamie Green does donuts to entertain the fans. Well done, sir. Uh, let's hear from Gary Paffett now, P2. It was a roller coaster, you know, I started, I started well. I got up to P4 at the start and was pretty happy there. And then after the safety car, uh, the safety car start was interesting. I got a great start actually, but we ended up nearly four abreast into turn one. And actually onto the back straight, I actually got pushed onto the grass and I, and I dropped right to the back. I was P15, I think, something like that. So it was tough. And at that point, I was just concentrating to look after my tyres. And then it was just about making the right call. You know, we had rain on two corners and uh, I was always telling the pits where, where it was wet, where it was dry. And together we, we made the perfect call. You know, we came in the perfect lap, uh, got out in P3. Uh, overtook Marco and, and, and was catching Jamie but not enough laps and there Jamie Green then it is his 14th DTM victory he receives his uh, trophy and holds it aloft the rainmaster Jamie Green then takes victory in the second race here at Hockenheim it's P3 for the BMW driver Marco Wittmann the current champion let's hear from him I have to say P3 today feels like a win for me um, coming from P17 I had a great first lap um, sewing me already on P10 and then after the safety car restart already on P6, so it was a great couple of first laps. And then it was pretty tricky really to make the call when to stop and when not. The rain changed from turn two to the motor drum and increased, decreased. So it was really tough. I was a few times calling my, my pit crew like slick, snow wet, slicks. Uh, and it was difficult to make the call. And at the end we, we did it right. And it, it's great. I mean, finishing P3, great battle with Gary, so uh, yeah, great race, which uh, to be honest, I not expected. Well, the Drivers' Championship now then sees Lucas Auer on 40 points. Jamie Green is on 26, tying with Gary Paffett. So let's hear from our race winner then, who mastered the rain. Here is Jamie Green. I must have been very quick on track because I certainly wasn't quick in the pit lane. I had the penalty, the stop and go. I stalled the engine when I left that. So it's more than five seconds because of the stopping and accelerating time. Plus, I stalled the engine. Um, so I was quite surprised that I was in the lead when I came out and uh, I had to check obviously we don't have radio communication so um, when I was catching back markers I was asking for my position because I was thinking ah maybe they're leading <laughs> so without a radio it's it's tricky but in the end it was good and I'm really happy 
I bet. And I guess I can say that once again you proved you really are the um, the rain uh, god, if you wish. And it's quite funny that as soon as it starts to rain now in the race, you have two Brits in the front. Yeah, I thought the same. I mean, you know, the Germans always wind us up about the weather in England, and uh, at least today we lived up to the reputation. <laughs> I certainly did. So congratulations. And that's basically it from here, from the Hockenheim Ring, a fantastic first uh, race weekend of the season. So thank you very much for joining us, and here are the highlights of the day. See you soon at Lausitzring. Bye-bye.